the Space Pirates are a ruthless organization, with the Space Pirates science team being a great example over how terrifying these Space Pirates can be. The Space Pirates team had an obsession of body modification and experimentation, taking any opportunity to experiment on literally anything, from inanimate objects to natural wildlife to even their own kind. This is how we get those dangerous abominations known as the Elite Pirates from Metroid Prime 1. Being a monstrous fusion of Space Pirate DNA and Phazon, they are one of the more formidable opponents in the entire series, with the Mega Pirate being a showcase of how destructive Phazon experiments can be. So for today's video, since the topic is a little bit more sinister than usual, I thought it'd be pretty cool to explain the Omega Pirates, the prototypes and setbacks that led up to the Pirates creation, and the overall story for Project Helix. So you can kind of think of this as maybe like this month's Halloween episode or whatever. That's pretty much how I'm seeing it, to be honest. <laughs> so of course, if you like Metro content, make sure to subscribe to my channel, check out the videos in the iCard above, and let's get started. The Space Pirates experiments on Phazon started aboard the Frigate Orpheon, where early experiments on parasites provided successful results for multiple projects to get started, with Project Helix and Project Titan being the only known examples so far. Project Helix's goal was to infuse Space Pirate DNA with Phazon to achieve the perfect pirate genome, as opposed to using natural wildlife or inanimate objects. Early experiments involved infusing Phazon with pirate embryos, but the results left subjects with damaged brain tissue with low survival rates. Many Space Pirates perished during the process to becoming an elite pirate, with experiment 7526 being one of many failed experiments. The few that did survive showed blind and erratic aggression, but the increase in muscle mass was enough of a success to continue the project. Progress on Project Helix would be limited due to the subjects and workers developing phase on madness. It's a sickness caused by deteriorating brain tissue, though some do believe it might have been an outside presence forcing its will amongst the infected. Regardless of the reason, the madness made the test subjects unpredictable and difficult to control with an increased tendency to friendly fire. Allies. Luckily, research team Scleria discovered a new strain of Phazon that increased the success rate of the project. Mutation strain 776-V, also known as the Vertigo strain, was used to develop a batch of embryos to full maturity and produce the Elite Pirate. The Elite Pirates developed into massive, powerful super soldiers. And through on-field testing and training, many scientists believe that a platoon of Elite Pirates would usher a new era of space pirate dominance. They could be used for heavy cargo transport wield the massive weapons, like the massive plasma artillery cannon, resist massive damage, absorb energy projectiles using an energy siphon system, and knock back enemies with quake generators. They've even had a 74% success rate against Samus in combat simulations, though their bulk make them very slow and their siphon systems make them very weak to concussive blasts. Despite their drawback, these elite pirates showcase the success of Project Helix, with two unique specimen emerging from the project. The first unique specimen was the Phazon Elite, with Elite Pirate Alpha being the main subject of this test. The test subject was injected and infused with energized Phazon. This direct infusion appears to burn out the body though, as the test subject develops Phazon filled tumors and an even shorter lifespan. The Phazon elites don't use plasma artillery cannons, instead they rely on their quake generators and energy siphons, though they are also especially equipped with wrist bayonets and can tank about twice the amount of damage that the standard elite pirates can take. And even though we only see one active specimen, scans do imply that there are other Phazon elite created in the project. Project, though it may be that Elite Pirate Alpha was the only survivor. The other unique specimen would be the Omega Pirate, formerly Elite Pirate Epsilon. The science team discovered that Epsilon had a very high tolerance for Phazon, allowing the science team to infuse dangerous amounts of Phazon that went beyond safety standards. Luckily though, the process was successful, with Epsilon being able to hold on to his mentality while still developing massive strength and size. Many in the science team saw the specimen as the pinnacle of Project Helix and gave it the title of Omega Pirate, along with the standard energy siphon and generator, the Omega Pirate is upgraded with two plasma incendiary launchers, a chameleon manta cloaking device, phazon infused regeneration, and a platoon of beam troopers at its call. The Space Pirates had high hope for the Omega Pirate. Unfortunately though, despite the positive results, Samus was still able to defeat all the active elite pirates. And with the destruction of the laboratories on Talon 4, the Space Pirates would postpone and eventually cancel Project Helix, as all the data and progress was destroyed. Though this would not be the end of Project Helix, it's been speculated that the Space Pirates revived the 
project to develop the Berserker Lords and Berserker Knights during the events of Metroid Prime 3. These heavily infused Phazon Super Soldiers share similar physical abilities to the Elite Pirates, and it even seems that the Berserker Pirates have signs of mental degradation, as they would also friendly fire on allies, a similar issue that plagued the early parts of Project Helix. These Berserker Pirates also don't have the same weaponry equipment and are more fragile than their Elite counterparts. All of these added setbacks and flaws are likely due to the key research and equipment being lost on Talon 4. The only other time the Space Pirates would have another caliber of, of Space Pirates similar to the Omega Pirates would be during the events of Federation Force, where the Space Pirates were able to artificially grow their own forces to the approximate size of an Omega Pirate using ancient growing technology found on Bion, though this process is unrelated to Project Helix in any way. And that's the story of Project Helix, a fascinating tale about how Space Pirates would go to the scientific extremes to create genetic abominations of a bioweapon. But of course, what do you guys think though? Did you guys enjoy this video? Did you learn something new about Project Helix and the overall story of the um, Elite Pirates? Was this an element of the story of Metro Prime that you weren't really fully aware of? Feel free to tell me your opinions in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestions for future videos or future segments, or if you have ideas for like other aspects of the Metroid lore you want showcased, feel free to let me know in the comment section too. If you like Metroid content, feel free to click on the videos above. It's a simple theory just discussing the ideas that there might be two lost sources of Metroid out there in the galaxy. It's kind of related to this because of the whole phase on experiments on Metroids. It's a separate but also related project to like Project Helix. So yeah, make sure to check out some of my social medias like my Twitter, Discord, maybe Patreon, Twitch possibly, though we'll see. But regardless, I'm the Metroid Trainer. I hope you like, favorite, subscribe, and stick around for next time because I'll be seeing you later.